Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me. This presentation is about controlling populations through subliminal and subconscious messaging, or that is to say, getting folks to do or think certain things using very subtle pictures, colors, or words. We could start with some of the more innocent or seemingly innocent examples like what is done by the big corporations and companies when they advertise their products or services to the people through their commercials. Take Amazon seen here, an arrow connecting A to Z and creating a grinning face, telling the target subliminally that Bezos sells everything from A to Z and that you will be happy about it. Tostitos. The fourth, fifth, and sixth letters are arranged in a way that shows two friends enjoying a bowl of tortilla chips. In this KFC commercial, within the lettuce we can see a Federal Reserve note. When asked about this particular ad, the colonel said that the idea was to have folks see this flash of cash and then rewind their DVRs and rewatch the commercial in more detail to verify what it is that they are seeing. Thus forcing the target to slow down and actually watch the advertisement rather than doing what most people do when they have DVR to TV show which is fast forward through the ads. We then start to look at some of the more sinister messages like SFX Magazine, a sci-fi publication. It seems that whenever there might be what many feel is an attractive woman on the cover they seem to place their pictures in a way that makes the SFX logo say sex instead of SFX. In this older palm olive print ad, we can see a woman in the shower who seems to be lathering her legs up with palm olive with the catchphrase shown that reads, who can resist the gentle touch of palm olive? However, when one takes a closer look at the arm that's doing the lathering, it is clearly husky, burly, and a man's arm that is caressing the female's leg. How about colors? Yes, of course. And they are much more powerful to your subconscious mind than you may think. Research by the Color Institute shows that consumers make judgments about products in large part based on color alone as much as 90% of that assessment. Shoppers cite that color is the primary reason they, cho they choose one product over another. The psychology of color is important, very important. The consumer's first experience with a product is usually through sight, and that is about shape and color. Almost everyone reacts to a color in the same universal way. We instinctively associate red with passion and blue with calm, for example. But subconsciously, we associate certain colors with other things, and here is a chart. I'd like to talk a little bit about blue. We can see that the chart from the Color Institute shows blue as being associated subconsciously with trust. Remember 2016 or 2020? What about Facebook and Twitter? Aren't Facebook and Twitter currently attempting to be the ministries of truth? Trying to make the sheeple believe that these platforms are all about truth? They are basically attempting to control the perception of the world. Is what they claim to be trending really trending? Or do they just want you to think that this particular issue is a prominent topic being discussed by the masses at the time? Like say transgenderism or racism? But with this calming blue logo, many will subconsciously trust all of the propaganda that they serve up to them. As we move further into the future, we see how they have been able to send us subconscious messages without having to go through your eyes or your ears, but by embedding a certain electromagnetic frequency directly into the actual program itself. You can effectively hypnotize the viewer. Done so when this frequency continuously hits the target throughout the course of a program. And if you don't believe me, you can read the U.S. patent on this particular process, which I will leave in the description. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if we can all agree that there's a group of very sinister people who have gained a highly inordinate amount of control over the world, a 
multi-generational group who are continuing to pursue their ancestors' goals of world domination. And if we can agree that these people control close to 90 to 95% of the news media, social media, major industry, sports industry, music industry, Hollywood, Fortune 500 co corporations, colleges through radical professors and corrupt in the club university presidents, etc., then we must not be naive and we must believe that these deviants, these perverts, these Luciferians have also infiltrated the U.S. and most every other government of the world. And it would then be natural that these demons would then use these resources that they control the vast majority of against us. That they would deploy these resources like their major news outlets or their celebrities and athletes to further their own goals of which we have agreed that world domination is one of them. The claim here is that the the, that subliminal messaging has been occurring and we are being hit from the front, the back, the left, the right, and the top and bottom with a precisely choreographed narrative tailored and designed by an evil group of sociopaths, actually most likely psychopaths, who worship the devil. <laughs> Ain't that a kick in the head? While today it is still about getting us to buy their stuff, we can clearly see that it is also about something else, a way of thinking. Take any recent prominent issue like, say, the immigration crisis, where these people in control want to flood the U.S. with people from different countries, like mostly third world, Middle Eastern, or North African countries. And, and now before I get attacked for that statement, I'd like to say that if I'm not mistaken, America didn't even accept normal migration from these areas until the 1960s. And I believe that was due to the stark cultural differences in those areas compared to America. The idea was that due to these differences, assimilation would be much more difficult and thus possibly even detrimental to the target country and even the immigrant. The goal is to internationally blend all countries of the world in order to strip them of any national or cultural pride so that they feel no bond with theirs and their ancestors' homeland and then comes no borders and why would you need borders if there's one government ruling the whole planet world citizens ladies and gentlemen another way that they're trying to get us to think is through the lens of race clearly they're trying to insert race into every single issue from police brutality to voting to sports and even going so far as to claim that covid was racist towards african americans we see them use buzzwords, another form of subliminal subconscious control mechanisms. Buzzwords like us or together when trying to brainwash the masses with regard to race or immigration issues. And in fact, go back to 2016 and Hillary Clinton again and recall one of her taglines. We see stronger together. And of course, in that calming, trustworthy blue again. These buzzwords, these buzzwords hit you at your core, dear listeners. And I'm not sure if we all know the full extent of how it hits us and affects us and why it does so. And if the people in control know this much, what else do they know and what else are they deploying upon us? This leads us to the much darker side of it all. Most of us are now agreeing that these people in control are Luciferian devil worshippers. And if these people have special knowledge that we don't, knowledge that maybe came from some private study that they funded, just as an example, or maybe some knowledge that came from a governmental organization like DARPA that they control, knowledge about the human psyche or the subconscious mind, what other messages might? they be sending to us. This is the 2021 Super Bowl halftime show. This is the weekend band or group or whatever we call it. He did the halftime show. And I'm not here to break this down subliminally per se. I am going to point out the multitude of clearly deliberate subconscious and subliminal messages. But the problem is that I know that they are subliminal messages. However, I don't know what most of it means. And maybe some folks out there could help out. 
One of the first things that strike you in this is an angel falling down from the sky just before he, or as, he begins his performance. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a sec. The other thing that strikes you is the skyscrapers and this urban, big city feel. And assigned to each and drop down right behind those cities and skyscrapers is that fallen angel. One behind every city. But with a very evil looking mask and flashing red eyes. Now remember folks that Lucifer is a fallen angel and I've covered this extensively on this channel in the Mystery Babylon section of my work. Lucifer's fall from heaven is actually a very, very important part of their history. And I believe that that is what this represents. The cities or buildings I'm not quite sure about. They control most major cities as we all know and they seem to have placed Lucifer behind each city in this performance so the sky's the limit with what this might mean. Maybe it's a message to one of their own denoting that they have taken full control of the cities and based on the COVID controls put in place in the last year I'd say this is a fact. There's words that flash within and amongst these skyscrapers alone Hours, touch, and enough. Maybe someone out there can help with that one. This lead singer, the main guy here, is deliberately being portrayed precisely as the main guy. Their main guy, Lucifer. Remember now, those demonic angels controlling the cities seem to represent the fallen angel or Lucifer directly after his fall. I believe that this clown is representing Lucifer after his fall and after assuming his throne in hell. And one reason I say that is his attire and his clear leadership, but let's check out his backup singers and dancers. What in the fresh hell is this? Now we see Lucifer, or Weekend, lead his disciples into some sort of carnival-like House of Mirrors, House of Illusion type maze. Once again, there's a few words popping out here and there at us, like nothing, feel, and gone. These mirrors create distorted reflections while the camera moves around frantically while zooming in and out of the lead singer's face creating yet more distortion. He leads his zombie-like followers through this maze of mirrors and confusion as they seem to aimlessly wander around, bumping into each other. It almost reminds me of how atoms act when heated up. Distorted cameras, distorted reflections, and confused zombie-like demons wandering through mazes. Then later, those Fallen angels no longer look like angels. They are now dressed in shiny all black clothes and they appear somewhat peaceful and calming. In fact, they're playing a soothing number on a violin. And I'm not sure what that means either. It might mean that since they are back in full control and maybe they are now lulling everyone who might have awakened back to sleep. Again, maybe someone out there could add to this. Finally, Lucifer marches his minions out onto the field for a grand finale. The cities turn red, the sky turns red, and those demons start bouncing around and into each other again before the show finally comes to an end. I believe, dear listeners, that the 95 million estimated people who watched this halftime show this past February witnessed some sort of satanic ritual and had their subconscious mind attacked on that night. Ladies and gentlemen, between instances like this and many, many more that we could look at, we can clearly see that there is a constant attack being waged upon our psyche. And I know not what type of long-term effects this may or may not have on us, but the bottom line is that it most definitely is happening. And I believe that being aware of it and seeing it for what it is may just break any potential spell, or I should say any potential long-term effect or any effect at all that it may have on you. So make sure you understand this stuff and learn about it as much as you can in order to protect yourself against it. 
If you enjoyed this presentation, please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.